Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, June 9th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Let's jump in to the trade. So first trade we made was an opening trade in EWZ. Uh, implied volatility was still really nice and high in there. So we, we've, we've put on and taken off a couple positions in there over the last couple weeks, ever since they came out with the, uh, with the uh, corruption going on with the president, you know, the IV spiked up. Uh, we already had a strangle on, which we had to manage our way out of, but we've continued to, uh, this, we, had, we actually put on a strangle here, had that huge drop, had to roll down our calls, manage our way out of that one, roll it, and then we've put on and taken off a couple other strangles in this period here. Uh, giving us some some nice opportunity. So the current position that we have on uh, that we put on on Monday is this one here. So it's still very centered, not quite enough profit to take off yet. The implied volatility did have a little bit of an uptick today with the down move. So we uh, so we'll wait to uh, to take that off for a little bit more profit. Next trade was a closing trade in wheat. So we closed out our put verticals. So uh, in a previous, a couple weeks ago, we, we took off our call side because the put side got breached and then price uh, in wheat made a nice reversal, nice move up. And so we booked that profit in wheat, giving us a really nice profit on the overall iron condor. And then in EWZ, uh, I already mentioned that, we, uh, we, this is one that we closed. So this was our 30, 536 our inverted strangle that we had rolled from June so we took that off took got back a lot of that original loss that we took on that huge move in the EWZ uh, ETF and then we'll continue to add on positions if implied volatility stays high uh, also had an opening trade in corn so again remember guys when we when we have these uh, periods of low implied volatility like we've had I'm gonna turn to some of these uh, vehicles like corn and, and wheat and soybeans that, that where you get a really good credit for the amount of risk that you take. And I know some members don't have that futures uh, opportunity to trade yet, but you wanna get that as soon as possible because they are really good trading vehicles. So let's take a look at corn. And I try to, I try to spread these out. I try to do you know, a little bit of stocks, ETFs, some uh, you know trades on futures because I know all the all the subscribers here uh, like like some different things. Some people only trade these futures, so I like to sprinkle those in. Some only trade the equities, so I I use those too. But the concepts are the same, okay? And and this is really about learning how to trade these different strategies. So here's the iron condor and corn. You can see it's still well within our range. Nothing to do there yet. Next, uh, next trade was a, was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed out the put side of our wheat iron condor. Price breached to the upside, so we, we, uh, we took off the untested side, just like we teach in the course. So here's what that looks like now. So price is sitting still right up here on our, our break even. We've had a little bit of a down move to bring us back in our range. And if it moves down some more, then we'll take this off and, and bank a profit on the overall trade. And then when I make that adjustment, what I also like to do simultaneously is add another centered iron condor, okay? Collect some more credit, give ourselves more time to be right, and widen those break-evens. So I did that, and this, this position is in July, so I added the new one out in August, which currently has 42 days to expiration, so right in our wheelhouse. And as you can see, you know, still, still well within our range here, nothing to do. What you'll notice if, when you're putting on these grain trades right now, because of the, uh, the little spikes that we've had uh, and, the, and the option premium increase, the options are pricing the risk to the upside. I mean, look at, when I put this on, the price was about right here, but look at the difference in how much we have from our downside break even versus our upside. Look how much more room we have on our upside than we do on our downside. So. Just interesting the skew that's in those grain option premiums right now. Uh, I, I still like to put it on based on the deltas and, and let, that, uh, let that skew just play out. But, but uh, kind of interesting to see. We usually don't see that much skew in those. 
Next trade and last trade was a, uh, what did I just mention? The, the iron condor that we added in wheat in the August cycle. So those were, those were the trades for the week. Let's take a look at some of our other current positions that we still have on. Still have this strangle on in oil. Price is hovering near our downside down here, but nothing to do yet. We'll continue to wait and monitor oil. We've, uh, we've seen a little bit of a decline in the implied volatility of oil, as you can see here. Uh, but, uh, but we need a little bit of a move up to profit on that trade at this time. Next trade, I mentioned corn, I mentioned soybean. Did I mention soybeans? I don't think I did. So in soybeans, we've got this, uh, we've still got the put side of our iron condor. So uh, price has moved back up into our range. So looking for a little bit more of a move up before we take that off. And that's in the July cycle, which only has 14 days left. So we'll probably make take that off late next week if we don't get a move in our favor or potentially early the next week. And then uh, same thing here, we added another iron condor in soybeans, so that's still very centered. Nothing to do here. DIA, we've got this iron condor on in DIA. What's interesting today, and the market's not closed yet, uh, look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is down over 2% yet the Dow is up 60 points. It's up over a quarter percent. I mean, you just don't see that usually. Uh, typically these indices are much more correlated, but interesting how these large cap stocks are holding up. Whereas, you know, some of the big name high flyers that we've been, that we've been seeing just climb and climb and climb like the Apples and Facebooks and Netflix, they're just getting absolutely crushed today. So it's, it's actually been good for our portfolio because we had a QQQ vertical on, which I'll just go to that now actually, which uh, you know looked like it was going to be a full loser, but look at this, it's moved all the way back up here. And you know, part of the reason, if you remember why we're holding this is just to add, to keep some of that short delta in our portfolio, uh, because as premium sellers, we want to have that protection to the downside. And I mean, look at it now, it's, it's really helping our overall portfolio out. Had to make it up about $300 just on this trade today. And uh, something, something's going on out there, you know, something spooking the, spooking the techs. Uh, so see if we'll see if we get any follow through in the uh, in the other stock indices and specifically the large caps. S and P is basically flat, just down a couple points, and the Dow still holding strong, up 65. Kind of crazy. Uh, let's see. So I mentioned the Dow. So we need a little bit of a down move in Dow. If it continues to move higher next week, we will adjust that by taking off our untested side and then potentially adding another centered iron condor around that. There's only, uh, oh no, we're in a, we're in 42 days there. So we got plenty of time to adjust that, to adjust that, uh, that trade. EFA looking for a little bit of a down move in EFA before we bank that profit. We've got that adjusted strangle in EFA. In EWZ, I mentioned that. Microsoft, big move down today, which has helped us. It was hanging around our break even. Uh, wasn't quite to the point of adjusting, but uh, you know, I was going to do it either today or early next week if it continued to move higher. We've got a huge move down right back and centered in our range. So that's, that's excellent for Microsoft. I mentioned the Qs. SPY, we've got this double calendar on. Just looking for a little bit more profit before I take this one off. So we've only got, um, let's see, seven days left in the front month of the of our SPY calendar. So we'll be aggressively taking this off early next week, regardless of what it does. But just hoping for a little bit more of a down move, potentially get a little bit of follow through on what's going on in the NASDAQ before I take that off. And same thing with TLT. I uh, just, just need a little bit more of an up move before we book that profit in TLT. Uh, as you can see, we've had a little bit of a down move there. Implied volatility is still around zero as far as the IV percentile and IV rank go. So nothing else to do in TLT at this time. So hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to next week where we will be live Monday morning and we'll, be, we'll jump back into that. Uh, so hope to see you then. Have a great weekend.